Okay, guys, so I know that we all talk about journalists or journalists as they deserve to be called, and a lot of us have lost all respect, if we ever had in it, uh, any of it, for games journalists in particular, because games journalists tend to be the ones who got into an industry uh, with the intention of working at the New York Times, Washington Post, you know, places like CNN. They don't, they don't want to be working at The Verge. They don't want to be working at Kotaku or IGN. They want to be working for some... Uh, outlet that covers politics and breaking world news, but they got stuck here. And so we have people like this complete a-hole, Sean Hollister over at The Verge, who decided to leak a whole bunch of information about the new game Deadlock that is coming out, despite the fact that they asked him not to. So again, his explanation, if you go down here in his article, says, I'm not under an NDA. I have signed no contracts and made no verbal agreements. I haven't even clicked through an EULA. And of course, you see right here, it says early development build. Deadlock is still in early development with a lot of temporary art and experimental gameplay. Do not share anything about the game with anyone. You see a little box here that says, OK, don't show this again. So here's what he says. This message does pop up when I played or when I launched Deadlock, but I didn't click OK. Instead, I hit the escape key and watched it disappear. So basically, this guy's a complete piece of garbage because he's like, oh, well, I found a little loophole here, so I don't need to listen to them. I'm, I'm not under an NDA. Complete garbage human being. But somebody who's not a garbage human or a group of garbage human beings is the guys over at Meta PCs. If you're in the market for a new PC, check them out, guys. They are fantastic people, hard workers. They kick ass and make some crazy builds. You can even get just a really simple pre-built PC or the, your custom build of your dreams. Of course, you can see that they got Black Myth Wukong with uh, some of their builds that you can pick up with some of the RTX 40 series, which is a game we're gonna talk about in just a minute here. But go check them out, guys. I got the link down below and a discount if you use my code Tebow. And of course, much, much love to these guys. That They've been sticking with me through thin and, uh, well, thin and thinner at this point now with the economy, the way things are going. And I can't thank them enough for this. So now talking about Black Myth Wukong and the way that these games journalists have been attacking this game. This is a game that's coming out in just a few days, guys. I believe it's coming out in, what, August 20th? Man, it is seven days away. We're at the one week mark. And yet IGN, going all the way back to 2023, for whatever reason, decided to go after this game. They decided to call the developers sexist, said they hate women, they have an inappropriate work culture, and they just hate women. You know, it's just like this complete... Uh, misogynistic anti-woman mentality of the developers again all of this coming down to essentially what could be a mistranslation of expressions which once again we saw mistranslation issues in the last video talking about thomas lockley but ign doesn't care they've been parroting this narrative or at least the other websites have been parroting it yeah, websites like the gamer talking about how oh yes black myth wukong's developer is accused of sexist unprofessional work culture and then parroting and, and copying the article from ign as proof of this so again, this is one of these things that's bled into like the Reddit spheres, and you can see this R girl gamers from eight months ago. In case you want to try Black Myth Wukong, it was developed by a Chinese studio that is completely sexist and had a lot of comments expressing their despise for female gamers. Their members publicly announced that their games are not for women and they do not need women. There are two articles about it, and of course, both are from IGN. And right Despite tons of Chinese women having expressed their anger, the studio does not care. And lots of men are expressing their strong expectations because they think this game is the future and the landmark of Chinese games. People who viewed the trailer and developed an interest in it, I hope you know the background before you pay for it. Well, I think, honestly, most people are going to pay for it because reality is, it is currently, I believe, the most wish-listed game on Steam. And all of this was on the heels of a rumor breaking that allegedly the developers actually said no to an extortion deal, uh, essentially from Sweet Baby Inc. or some consulting firm like them. Uh, the story from a Chinese media outlet said, yeah, you know, there was this DEI consulting firm that said, yo, you guys have a really bad image. You should try to fix this up, pay us $7 million and we will fix it for you. And again, we know how these places work. They shake you down, try to paint you as a racist or a bigot and say, oh, you've got a problem and we can fix it for you. But now we have the best part of this entire story. The benchmark tool, not a gameplay demo, not a early access beta or any kind of thing. The benchmark tool for Black Myth Wukong hits 85,000 concurrent players. Guys, this is as simple as I downloaded it once I got home. I let it run. It's a beautiful cinematic. It takes about two and a half minutes. I might even use some of that footage in the background. So if you're seeing that in the video, if I decide to do that, you know, after I'm done recording this, that's what this is, the benchmark tool that you're seeing. So again... 
This got 85,000 concurrent players. Hell, Concord, that disgusting DEI piece of garbage, what, they couldn't even get, what, 3,000 people in their beta or something? It was in the low thousands. And yet people are like, hey, I want to test this out. I've been honest to God considering buying this game. And after running the benchmark tool, I had high graphics, high shadows, high vegetation, high everything. And it ran at 70 to 80 frames per second. And it looked amazing. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to buy this game now. Because guys, check this out. Even right now, the excitement for this game is palpable. 23,000 people currently running the benchmark tool. Absolutely mind-blowing. Uh, Endymion points out that Black Myth Wukong benchmark test on Steam has more players than Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League at launch, plus pretty much most other woke games launch numbers combined. When this game comes out officially next week, it will be massive. Based gaming wins again, fellas. So yeah, I mean, I am seriously considering picking this game up. I've already done this with uh, Elden Ring Shadows of the Air Tree. I don't tend to buy games either pre-ordered or full price. I am as cheap as you can get, and I'm as patient as the earth. I tend to wait a long time. But honestly, when you see the articles and you see the smear pieces that IGN and Kotaku and The Gamer and all these other outlets and all the reeing and crying from the feminists on Reddit and Twitter... And we're, honest to God, guys, I don't know if any of you guys have uh, watched my previous video talking about this. A lot of what happened was that there were literal mistranslations where there were expressions that could have been taken out of context, poorly adapted, poorly translated by one of the guys who helped write this article for IGN. And yet they still ran with it. They didn't bother to go back and change anything, to make any edits, to verify for sure that they had everything proper and correct. They just went with their original story. All the other outlets ran with it. They painted these guys as like the worst people on the planet. And as such, they have done everything they can to possibly tank this game's launch. And you know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't make a difference because this game is going to do huge numbers. It's going to be astronomically large. And good for them. Honest to God, I, I, I think that this is one of those games that if you're on the fence about it and you think, hey, I like Dark Souls games and I want to, you know, I, I have a few bucks to spend buy the game. I think it's definitely worth it. But I'm going to leave it right there, guys. Let me know what you think about all this. Leave a comment down below. Um, I'm, I'm jazzed. I'm excited about this. This is going to be awesome. So I will catch you guys later. Let me know what you think about all this. All right. And if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you for being here. I do have two channels, Minimal Effort Podcast, as well as my gaming channel. I do have a Twitch and Kick for my gaming channel. We do live streams over there occasionally, maybe once a week. And then if you are in the market for a new PC, make sure to check out Meta PCs. Click the link I have down below. Use code TEBO at checkout for a special discount. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.